you know, the, the Gulf states uh, and, and countries like the Gulf states have been speaking about food and water security for a long, long time. Uh, and I think COVID has been a real jolt. All of a sudden, you know, there, there's a threat not just to um, food uh, being uh, traded, but actual food production in countries that were well known for it. Uh, and so there is this kind of um, a reaction to say, well, not just economic nationalism, but self-sufficiency in some way, mm -hmm. a focus on trying to find the right technologies, the right groups, the right set of scientists uh, uh, and managers who can actually help us um, fill, fill the gap. Well, definitely. I mean, th uh, that goes also with the idea that, that uh, many countries are going to uh, explore diversification in, into economic sectors yeah. that could protect them against the next big uh, COVID, right? And yeah, that sure. does require uh, investing in exactly things you said. So uh, food and water is one, uh, you know, if tourism is too vulnerable to uh, an economic downturn like this, maybe there has mm. to be other s service sectors, countries can go to manufacturing. There's a variety, and, and, and for small countries, it might make sense to actually even build partnerships with other small countries in order to create mm -hmm. critical mass for certain industries. Of course, yeah. Uh, yeah. If there's a common interest, there might be common electricity, common water, common food. I mean, let's say the next frontier for GCC beyond security may ve well be in the economic arena. And this is one of those opportunity issues we were talking about at the beginning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, so, so yes, absolutely. But again, you know, that takes you so far. And then at some point you were going to say that generational wealth still needs uh, going back to sort of neoliberalism. So mm -hmm. if we went back in history, many countries' development, let's say South Korea, started in the 1950s and 60s with building self-sufficiency in industry, cars, yeah, sure. steel, and all of that. Uh, and then the second phase was that, how do we actually make these uh, uh, you know, globally viable and yeah. embrace international trade in order to do that? And that's where these countries really got wealthy, is mm -hmm. when, they, when they use that initial investment in self-sufficiency to, to basically then generate wealth at a global level. Uh, I, mean, I think one of the key issues is, is what's the size of your market ultimately? Yeah. Because like, you, you know, if, if you're a very small country, uh, first of all, you're, you're not gonna be able to build self-sufficiency in many sectors. It's not economically viable. Mm -hmm. And secondly, even if you did, you very quickly are gonna reach saturation point. So um, you have to find ways to expand your market. Yeah. Which then gets you into ne neoliberal trade. 